But if you'll take to heart what the Bible says and know whatever God says about you, that's who you are. But we need to start speaking blessing so we can receive a blessing. We're called to make sure that people understand that God is alive. God chose his seed very carefully. He said, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Isn't that something to be chosen of God? Yes, my name is Johnny Randall. I want to welcome everyone to Walk by Faith Ministry. This morning, we're going to touch base on a subject that may be kind of touchy for some people. It is, where is God? Okay? Look at this right here, people. In the times we're living in right now, all the things that are taking place, people ask them, where is God? There is lack and poverty, there's sickness and disease, there's wars, there's all kinds of things taking place. And so people right now might want to know where is God, especially Christians, especially believers right now. I mean, there are Christian believers right now going through the same thing just like the world, man. They're being defeated by a lot of different sickness and disease. So you may ask yourself, where is God in the middle of all this? Well, God hasn't changed. Matter of fact, God has done some things for us, but we haven't taken advantage of what he has done. You see, in order for us to take advantage right now of what God has done for us, you're going to have to have some knowledge of his word. You see, when God sent Jesus 2,000 years ago, he provided everything you could ever want to need. Not only salvation, but I'm talking about victory, power, authority, healing, grace, mercy, love, power, everything you could ever want. But see, God did the first time he gave it to a man named Adam. Adam took and gave it all away. This time, God gave it to Jesus. And now to receive from God, you're going to have to be born again. And when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have access to all of the things that God says you can have. I mean everything. You see, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, look at right there. It says, to the Jew and also to the Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Now, if you got the power of God and the wisdom of God, now you need to learn how to access what God has given us. And you do that by speaking the name of Jesus and confessing God's word. And that'll change things. But see, here in this world today, we got believers and stuff, you know what I'm saying? They come into the body of Christ, but the only thing is, they still got a lot of the world in them. It's just like when Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage back in uh, the day of Egypt, okay? Moses went in and led the people out of bondage. And he got them out there in the wilderness. But the only thing was, he got them out of Egypt, but he couldn't get Egypt out of the people. They still murmured, they complained. They, 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 they did everything, okay? Now you gotta remember, God provided for them. He gave them water out of a rock. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them quail and dove to eat. He gave them a pillow of fire by night and a pillow of uh, cloud by day to cover them. Gave them everything, but you know what they did? They could murmur and complain about things, okay? That's what they did. And guess what? Even though God was providing for them under the old covenant, God has given us a brand new covenant and that covenant is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22, it said Jesus Christ is the guarantee of a better covenant. A better covenant means it's better than the old covenant. Today, man, God is not dwelling with us, but he's dwelling also in us. He takes residence on the inside of us when we make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of our life. Now that God dwells in us, people, you don't have to pray out loud. You don't have to scream and shout because he's right on the inside of you. So all you got to do is in the name of Jesus, call on the Father, and he's right there to hear and to answer. Well, if that's going on, why we have believers being defeated today by so many different things? Well, I found this out. When I talk to believers, I talk to Christians. You know what? They're saved, they're on their way to heaven, but their faith is only in salvation. They don't have faith in nothing else but the salvation. In other words, when a Christian get attacked with some kind of signal of the disease, they're telling me that God put this on them and that's why they're going through this stuff. Now, man, that's crazy, especially when Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, especially when 1 Peter, 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 tells us that by his stripes we were healed. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17 tells us that written by the prophet Isaiah that Jesus Christ himself took our infirmities and bore our sins and our sicknesses. Well, if Jesus took that stuff, why do we still have it? Because you're still talking like you have it. You see, people, if you want this victory I'm talking today, you're going to have to look at John chapter 15, verse 7. Jesus is talking to you today. He says, now, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done for you. And that's what we missed it. We're in Christ, but the word of God is not in us. Sure, you're saved. You're on your way to heaven. But when you open your mouth to speak, what's coming out? Is it what God says or is it what you see, feel, taste, touch and smell? 
If that's the case, people, that's what you're going to get. You see, you're going to have to make some adjustments in what you're believing and confessing. Your faith has to be more in the word of God than what you can see or feel. You see, the enemy's going to come against us here in this natural realm, and he's going to attack our body. There's nobody exempt from the attack of the enemy. But what do you do when the enemy attacks us? I'm glad you asked. God shows us in the word. You see, in James chapter 4, verse 7, he says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, first of all, he says, submit to the Lord. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. People, anytime you resist sickness and disease, lack and poverty, you are resisting the devil. You see in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it said how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness and disease is an oppression of the devil. Lack and poverty is an oppression of the devil. And so what you're going to have to learn to do is when that stuff come against you, you're going to have to know it's of Satan and not of God. But the devil has convinced people. I'm talking about Christians, believers, preachers. He has convinced them that he has a right to put that on you. Well, God's putting that on you because you sin. God's putting that on you because you know last night you got mad and you cussed somebody out. Well, you know you, you drunk up a bit of this or you smoked or you did some of this. So you know God did this. People, I'm here to tell you your righteousness is not based on what you did. If you did, none of us could be saved. The Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. People, let me tell you something. On your worst day, you got a blood-bought right to be healed. Did you hear me? Don't let the devil talk you out of what Jesus paid the price for. He paid the price, man. Look at here. If you will follow the teaching I'm going to give you this morning, you'll kick the devil out, man. He's going to attack your body. He's going to attack us with sickness and disease and lack and poverty. But he still don't have no right to do that because Jesus knew when you was at your worst. God knew when you was at your worst, he sent his son Jesus down the cross for you. Let me tell you what God did. God, 2,000 years ago, knew that you were going to need a savior. That's right. Where were you 2,000 years ago? You don't even know, man. You was in one of your ancestors' uh, uh, bellies or something like that 2,000 years ago, and you got passed down through the generation. But God knew that you was going to need some healing. He knew that you was going to need a Savior. So 2,000 years ago, he sent his son Jesus to the cross to die for your sins. I'm talking about sins you haven't even committed. And when Jesus got here, he didn't pay just for your sins you committed yesterday. I'm talking about your sins you committed today. I'm talking about sins you committed tomorrow. Man, the blood of Jesus is so powerful, people. It blots out all of your transgression, all of your sins. And I'm here to tell you, people, when you know the truth, anytime the devil attack you, I don't care what it is, blindness, cancer, sickness, disease, you'll look at the devil with a smile on your face, the devil, you must be a fool because I know the truth and the truth has set me free. You see, devil, you need to know uh, John chapter 8, verse 36 there. It says, who the son sets free is free indeed. It didn't say who Johnny Randall sets free. It's who the son sets free. You see, I'm free today because of Jesus Christ. I'm healed today because of Jesus Christ. I'm more than a conqueror because of Jesus Christ. People, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I got something else to let you know. I am the new, I am a new creature in Christ. You see, outside of Christ, you're an old creature, and you deserve whatever the devil can do to you. You see, people, I'm giving an example. Say, for instance, now, this day and time, you go to the store, you buy a new house, it's got a warranty on it. You get a new cell phone, it's got a warranty on it. You get a, a new garbage disposer or washer or dryer. Everything, when you buy it new, has a warranty on it. Maybe it's a year. You put extended warranty on it for three years. But guess what? After that, it breaks. You got to come out your pocket. You got to fix it. But guess what God tells us? When you accept Jesus, you become a new creature in Christ. That doesn't get old, man. You are a new creature in Christ. Now, that's who you are. Now, since you're a new creature in Christ, now Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 says, God took an oath that Jesus Christ is the guarantee of a better covenant. Did you hear me? I said, man, I said he's our guarantee. I'm not talking about a guarantee for six months. 
six years. I'm talking about as long as Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you've got a lifetime guarantee. And that guarantee covers sickness, disease, lack, poverty, demons, and devils, and everything the enemy can throw at you. Boy, when you know the truth, when something attacks you, you say, devil, you got to be blind, crippled, and crazy to come messing with me because I know who I am in Christ, Satan. Satan, I'm a new creature in Christ, and I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And Satan, you have no power. You have no authority over the believer. Satan, let me tell you what the word of God says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. We've been delivered from the power of darkness, translated into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in who we have redemption in his blood. People, in his blood, we are the redeemed of the Lord. In his blood, we're the righteousness of God. In his blood, you cannot be defeated, man. You see, all you got to do is get into the book and know who you are in Christ. And, and better than that, know who's inside of you. First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You see, I can't speak for nobody else. But see, I take God at his word. I have what he says, I believe what he says, and I don't even have to see it. I have it, I believe it, because God said it. I don't have to feel healed or confess I'm healed because I believe the word of God. I don't have to be able to see you right now to know that I'm healed because I believe the word of God. There is no blindness that's greater than the word of God. There ain't no sickness greater than the word of God. There ain't no demon, no devil greater than my God. You see, people, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I'll tell you this right here. I'm not going to die until I get ready to get through preaching this gospel around the world. See, people, when you know the truth, man, it changes your whole look on life. The Bible tells us in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he says, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary the devil prowls about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. But what he tells us to do, resist him steadfast in the faith. You see, people, look at this right here. I don't know about you, but the Bible, the Bible said the devil comes as a roaring lion. To me, a roaring lion is some type of cat, right? Oh, he might be a big cat, but he's still a pussy cat, okay? So let me tell you what I see in my mind eyes. Here comes the devil, okay? I know he's going to come. You know how I know he's going to come? Because when you preach that word of God concerning healing, he's going to attack you with sickness. You preach the word of God concerning finances, he'll attack you with lack and poverty. Whatever you preach, the devil is going to attack you in that area. How do you know that, Brother Randall? Because in Mark chapter 4, verse 15, these are they by the wayside who heard the word, and they said the devil comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their life, lest they be saved. You see, whatever you preach, he's going to attack you with that. So if I preach salvation, the enemy's going to attack that, whatever I preach, okay? I know he's going to come. But see, since I know I'm preaching healing, deliverance, salvation, and I'm preaching this victory, he's going to come and attack in all these arrows. But I ain't afraid of it. Man, matter of fact, I'm ready for you, sucker. Come on in here. And I'm down here. Here comes the devil. Now, I got my little thing. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. And when he come up there, I put my foot on his head. Meow, meow, meow. And there goes the devil. Man, the devil ain't big and the devil ain't bad. The devil just defeated, man. Don't fear cancer. Don't fear blindness. Don't fear stroke, heart attack, arthritis, none of that stuff. Because my God is greater than all those things. People, let me tell you something. I'm not bragging or boasting, but I want you to know this. This is the gospel truth now, okay? It'll be 10 years in August. I've been free of cancer, okay? But listen to me. Just because I'm free of it doesn't mean the enemy hasn't attacked me. That enemy since, since uh, uh, it'll be 10 years in August. During that time, I bet you that enemy has attacked me with symptoms in my body probably hundreds of times and tells me a lie. That cancer's not gone. It's still there, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, devil, shut your lying mouth out and get out in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. Sometimes two or three days, it's gone, okay? But let me tell you what happened just a little bit. Uh, oh, I think today is Friday, so this happened like Monday, okay? You know, I'm believing God, praising him, worshiping him. The enemy attacks my body, all right, telling me. That's cancer, Johnny Randall. <laughs> you got to forgive me, y'all, but you know what I'm saying. It, to me, it's funny, but he attacks me, all right? And I just, I'm, I'm just telling you what I do when he does attack. People, I do not fear death. You know? I don't fear death, man. You know? But the pain is real. All that stuff is real. But when you don't let the devil get you down, man, you, hey, you got him. So he attacks me, all right? Right there in the side. 
Johnny Randall, that's prostate cancer. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. But anyway, I laugh at him and I said, devil, listen to this right here. With the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I put my hand right there, get pain in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, it didn't leave. Matter of fact, it got worse, man. I mean, just a pain in my side. That devil screaming, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do this. You didn't, you should have took that chemo, boy. You should have took that radiation. People, nobody knows this because I don't go tell nobody. I'm just sharing a testimony with you with things that happen. You're hearing this live right now, okay? All right, Monday went by, man. I, didn't I don't tell nobody. I just, me, I'm doing battle with the devil. The Bible said, fight the good fight of faith, okay? See, when I'm in a fight, I ain't got time to talk to nobody else, you know? I ain't talking to nobody but God. I don't go to God, oh, God, I thought I was healed, but it's back. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't how I do it, people. I don't, you know what? I praise God and I whoop up on the devil. You know what I'm saying? I praise God and I whoop up on the devil. So anyway, I'm speaking to it, commanded to leave in Jesus' name. First day, second day, nothing. Third day, man, 95% of the pain gone. But it don't matter. It doesn't matter if the pain was still there. People, if the pain was still there, that does not make God a liar. You see, God tells the truth, and I don't care if the pain there or not. God tells the truth, and I don't care if I see or not. You know, see, when I stand on God's word, there is no blindness that can take the place of God's word. When I stand on God's word, there is nothing going to change that, man. Let me tell you something, people. I'm a lot of things, but religion is not one of them. Religion will get you killed. You know what I'm saying? Because religion had you making an excuse. Well, you know, God just put me through this. Maybe God's trying to teach me something. You ain't been reading your Bible. You ain't been reading your Bible, man. Jesus Christ paid the price for all of your sins. Galatians 3.13 tells us Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Blindness. Cancer, sickness, disease, lack and poverty, aches, pain, blood clot, stroke, heart attack, arthritis. I don't care what it is. It's of the curse, man. Do you know before there was no devil, there was no sickness, there was no disease? But now that that stuff is in the world today, God sent his son Jesus to defeat that stuff. And you know what God did? He gave us his grace. The Bible says by grace are you saved through faith. You wrap your faith around God's grace and hold fast to it. You see, I know in the spiritual realm, it's everything has already been done. God ain't got to do nothing else, man. I'm telling you, everything that you could ever want or need has already been taken care of. But see, the only thing here, the reason you don't see the results is because the believers are still trying to get God to do something that he's already done. But you know what God Jesus did? After he defeated death, hell, and the grave, and after he rose on the third day, he gave that power, that authority to the church. And that's in Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse 19 there. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. It said, he gave him, to, he put all things onto his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church. God delegated that power to us through his son Jesus. And look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Behold, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. He says, whatsoever you bind upon the earth, I'll bind in heaven. Whatsoever you loose up on the earth, I'll loose in the heavenly. You see, we're thinking it's up to God now. No, man, the ball is on my court. The ball is on your court. And right now, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. And that's why you're not seeing a whole lot being done in this world today. Because the believers are sitting around screaming to God, oh God, can't you see? Oh God, don't you know? Oh God, won't you help me? God said, look, I've given you Jesus. I've given you my word. Pick up that book. If you ain't going to pick up the book, call Walk by Faith Ministry. Call Johnny Randall. He'll show you what the answers are, man. You know, I'm not boasting and bragging, people, but you don't have to be defeated. Look here. Either the word of God is true or it's not. Either the Bible's real or it's not. And when Jesus said, with his stripes you're healed, either you're healed or you're not. And you're not healed because you look like it or feel like it. You're just healed because God said it. And God can't lie. I am everything that God says I am, and I don't have to see it but believe it. You see, when I confess what he says, I believe what he says, and I have it. And that settles it right there, man. And I'm here to tell you right now. On national TV, there is no doctor, no wife, 
No uncles, no preacher, no Christian, no demons, no devil that's ever going to separate me from what the Word of God said. You see, if I want to know the truth about something, I don't go to a man, I go to the Bible. If I want answer to something, I don't go to a man, I go to the Bible. All the answers is in the word of God, and he tells us we're more than conquerors. We're the righteousness of God. We're the seed of Abraham. This is who we are in Christ. You see, I don't know about you, but I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the seed of Abraham. This is what the Bible says about me. And I just come into agreement with what the word says, man. And there is no cancer. There is no aches and pain, no stroke, no heart attack. Nothing is going to defeat me because I'm in Christ. There is no sin that can do that because I'm in Christ. Let me ask you a question. Could sin defeat Jesus? You'll say no. Well, are you in Christ? You'll say yes. Have you sinned? You say yes. Well, see, if you are a Christian and you have sinned and you're in Christ, the blood of Jesus washes you clean, man. And if you got sin conscious, he said, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now your sin conscious is gone. You see, people, it works like that. In the book of Numbers, chapter 13, okay, verse 30. Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land. They went in there. Before they went in there, they went and spied out the land. 12 of them did. They went in there to spy out the land. They come back with some of the fruit of the land. And they said, oh, yes, yeah, a land flow with milk and honey. But they got to talking about the giants and how big they were and how big the city was and all the weapons. And they talked about this. And they went on and on and on. Sound like a lot of Christians. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my aches and my pain and my this and that. that. I mean, it's yang, 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 yang. Shut up! You know, just shut up. Man, you don't have to go through all of that. Boy, it gets quiet when you're preaching like this, doesn't it? But listen to this, man. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. Caleb stilled the people before Moses. In other words, Moses, Caleb said, shut up. That's enough hearing about the giants. He said, let us go up at once and possess the land, for we are well able to do it. Boy, that's my, that must be my uncle right there, Uncle Caleb, because he, he reminds me a lot of me, man. But you know what the other 12 spies, the other, the other rest of them said? We be not able. They're bigger than we. They're giants. Everybody has died from strokes and heart attacks. Cancer has defeated so many people. Oh, God, I don't know why you brought us into this land. Oh, God, I don't know why you did this. People, you need to quit looking at the giant and start looking at God. You see, you're so full of the world until you can't even see what God said. I'm talking about Christian today. You are so full of what the world tells you until you don't even know what God said. And when you know what, when you tell them what the word of God said, you know what they'll do? Well, you know what? That'll preach. That'll preach. Man, the Bible says you shall live by faith. And if you don't live by faith, you'll die without it. And that's what happened, people. They didn't get to go into the promised land. Matter of fact, everyone that was 20 years old and older died in the wilderness because they didn't believe God. If you go to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19, it says they were not able, the children of Israel were not able to enter into the promised land because of unbelief. We got a lot of unbelieving Christians in the world today. Oh, they'll preach a good message. They'll tell you, oh, I believe God. Oh, God can do anything. Oh, yes. They do all this mess, but they're still being defeated outside of here. Man, let me tell you something. You got to live this word, not just when I'm in the pulpit. You see, I'm already got fired up before I got here. But when I step out this pulpit and I go out there in the world, man, I'm hollering kitty, kitty, kitty. Have y'all seen the devil? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on over here. I'm going to put my foot on his head, man. Why? Because I know who I am in Christ. You don't have to fear demons and devils. You don't have to fear sickness and disease. What's coming against you right now? You name that sickness. You name that disease, man. Do you not know that we have this victory in the name of Jesus? We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Look at this right here, people, in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. Verse 29, you see, they had just got through raising a man who was been lame for 40 years. 
And they've been beaten and persecuted. They go back to the people and they're counting it all joy that they were beaten for being, for preaching, teaching the gospel and healing the lame man. And this is what Peter said. He said, Lord, hear their threatenings. Hear what they said. But give your servants boldness. I'll stretch your mighty hand that healings can be done. Let miracle signs and wonders be done in the name of thy holy son, Jesus. People, I prayed that prayer and I got a boldness, man. So what did you say, Brother Rand? I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my God just then. See, I wanted to give him praise. But see, people, I'm here to tell you, this victory that we have, you have it because of what Christ has done for us. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with who lives in me. Man, when I confess greater is he that's in me, I'm talking about God Almighty, the presence of God, the power of God. In the name of Jesus, we all have this power. But you know what? If you don't access this power by speaking the word of God in the authority of Jesus' name, you will never see this. You will never see it. You will never see it. Because you know what? In order to walk by faith, you're going to have to believe and confess what the Bible says. So many believers today are walking by sight. You think you're sick because you feel like it. You think you're blind because you can't see. You think you're not healed because you can't walk. That ain't nothing but a lie from the pit of hell, man. Nothing changes the word of God. There is nothing that can change that word, man. If anything changed the word of God, then God's a liar and we're just a bunch of fools. We might well close the churches down and get out there and live like the rest of the world. But I'm here to tell you that word will work if you will work the word. Did you hear me? I said a word will work if you will work that word. How do you work the word? By meditating what God says and be ready for the enemy to stick his head up. And I'm here to tell you, people, if you live on this planet, the enemy's going to come against you. And he's going to come against you with sickness and disease and lack and poverty and fear and doubt and unbelief. Because he's trying to separate you from the word of God. He wants you to have more confidence in this fleshly body than the spirit of God that lives on the inside of you. So now you get to make a choice. Am I going to believe the word of God? Am I going to believe what the world tells me? Look at 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. My faith in the word of God, my faith in Jesus gives me victory every time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I want to thank everyone today for joining us at Walk by Faith Ministry. We just know that you were blessed by because it's God's word. But if you like a copy of the message you've seen today, you can contact KFXB TV and you can get a copy of the message you've seen today. Thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to seeing you again. Until then, God bless you so very much. In Jesus' name.